A very good evening to all. I am Sandeep Bansali from the team GIBS Business School, Bangalore. Today, we all are virtually connected as a part of GIBS Light of Knowledge webinar series. Today's topic is Design Thinking 2.0, A New Wave. I welcome all the participants to this webinar on behalf of GIBS Business School, Bangalore family. Please allow me to share few insights about GIBS before we begin. Global Institute of Business Studies is a place where talents are nurtured, ambitions are cherished, ideas shared, and dreams fulfilled. GIBS Business School is a part of Goyal Educational Trust, which is an exclusive business school based in Bangalore. GIBS offers AICT approved PGTM and Bangalore University affiliated BBA programs. To prepare its students for success, GIBS has introduced a number of unique programs like Innovation, Research and Entrepreneurship Program, Finishing School, Business Mastery Program are few of the major programs of GIBS Business School as a part of their curriculum. Since our inception, we have an excellent placement track record. Our students are determined to be industry ready by the majority of the biggest corporations. Throughout the course, we ensure that our, there is a proper balance of practical and theoretical training. GIBS has recently awarded us a Teaching Learning Efficiency Award by India's top prestigious higher education and university awards 2021-22. In 2021, GIBS has been ranked AAA by Career360, 11th Best Emerging B School by Times of India, 19th Best B School of eminence in India and 12th best B school in Karnataka by competitive success review. GIBS has featured by Forbes India as a new age B school and a best emerging B school by Outlook 2022. GIBS Business School has introduced a series of national level and international level free webinars, panel discussion and leadership talk series on trending topics called as GIB spreading the light of knowledge. I would like to extend a warm greeting to Professor Anup Nagarajan, GIBS faculty, the resource person of this today's webinar. Sir, we are grateful to accept, we are grateful that you have accepted our invitation to participate in this webinar as a keynote speaker. So it's our privilege to have you here, sir. Today's webinar topic is Design Thinking 2.0 New Wave. So it's my privilege to introduce Anup, sir. Professor Anup Nagarajan is a faculty of marketing management in GIBS Business School, Bangalore. He is a very versatile and a brilliant trainer in the field of organizational development and change management, an MBA by qualification. He breathes and lives by the principle of Six Sigma. He has trained over 500 plus organizations in the past 15 years. Some of the well-known brands who are their clients are Honeywell, Oracle, ING, Infosys, Hindustan Aeronautical Limited and many more. He is also an expert trainer in the field of design for Six Sigma Green Belt and a balance scorecard. Professor Anup has also trained at various MBA institutions, imparting his best knowledge and paving the path for many youngsters. He started training as his passion during his career at Geneva in Switzerland more than a decade ago. He has traveled Europe and Asia very extensively, marketing perfumes and wines in his younger days. His training methodology is very simple. Tell show, do, and review. Participants not only realize the value of training, they also undergo an experiential learning. I'm sure, sir, there are a lot of other achievements to share about you, but uh, please accept my apologies for cutting it short. I request all the participants to kindly post your questions or doubts in the Q&A section. We shall take it at the end of the session. Anup, sir, uh, over to you, sir. I'll share my screen right away, sir. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. Thank everyone. My name is Anu, Professor Anu Brahma Shastri Nagarajan. Uh, and I really thank GIBS for giving me this wonderful opportunity to come online, especially for this webinar. All your questions uh, will be answered. And I would like to start this webinar with a very simple video that what I do have. I've been a participant for quite a few webinars as well. I do know the difficulties what participants would face because this part of the communication, only the host is speaking while as the listeners, they are inept in terms of their questions. So they will be waiting to ask some questions. The first video that I do have, Sandeep, if I can, if we can play this, I'd be very glad. 
uh, can help me. Yeah, thank you. Please take a look at this video. I'll come back and continue with the session. Sandeep, one, one minute. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a problem with the video. I think that the streaming is not coming in at the pace that what it is. The purpose of playing this video is, I will share this link with all the participants as well. We start the design thinking by showing this video. This is at the F1 races. We know that we are not in the F1 races, but however, this has a lot of thinking to do for the design thinking. What happened was when design thinking was introduced, even the car's tire replacements that took about 1.92 seconds, or rather I would say that which was about 1.93 seconds, towards the end of the video, if you can see, it drops to about 1.76 seconds. Why did it happen? And is design thinking a new way forward? Yes, it is. You can see in the next slide that what I do have, what is design thinking and why design thinking, what was used in the past is different than what we have today. In the newer version of the design thinking, now we do use a lot of strategy. Perhaps the word strategy is needless to say to anyone. Strategy plays a very important role in any organization, with any educational institution, as well as in, in daily life to everything. We have introduced not only strategy, but we have introduced something what we call as a blue ocean strategy. Blue ocean strategy is very different than the red ocean strategy. Generally, what happens is that we all ideate, we all cry for the ideas. Today, it is not the money problem, it is the idea problem. Anyone who's got a fabulous idea, we always say that he is filled with money. If people come back and tell us that they have lots of money and no ideas, it is just the opposite of it. How do we plan, how do we design, and how do we move forward? And what is the blue ocean strategy? Rule number one, when you are applying a strategy, you should never, never look at your competitors. You are bound to look at only within yourselves. What do I mean by this? I'll give you a classic example. There was a, there's a company by name Circuitis Solaces, which is based out of uh, India. They started adapting this quite recently. And so was it with Samsung and quite a few other companies. They brought in design thinking and they started competing within their own organization. They never, never looked at their competitors. They said, by way of looking at the competitors, I am now exuberating or I'm wasting my talent, I'm wasting my energy, I'm wasting my time. And I'm also trying to say that every time I look at my competitors, I'm thinking that I'm missing something. But the bigger miss is that when we are not looking at ourselves. I know that today's time is too short. I am going only with the, what we call as, uh, as, as the tip on the iceberg. But generally, we do take about two days or three days for these webinars, in the normal training programs. Once you develop a strategy, once you redefine your blue ocean strategy, you are ought to revisit those strategies once again to see whether there is an alignment in our thinking. How many times all of us have thought for ourselves and said, it's a great idea that what I do have, but why is it that I did not implement it? Okay, we have implemented the idea, but why is it that we are not revisiting the ideas? This is the secret behind most of the scientists, most of the well-known personalities today, as you can see, right from Narayan Murthy to, you know, you can talk about 
Albert Einstein to the others, they never, never, never look at their competitors. The other point that what we what we try to take a look at is is called as the TRIS. TRIS is a tool for design thinking. TRIS only speaks about the theory of innovative problem solving. Well, problems are there for everyone, but how innovatively are we trying to solve a problem? We all face contradictions when we are developing something. Or rather, we say that in any organization or an educational institution, contradictions are a part and parcel of the entire thinking system. Truth as a tool will help us a lot to mitigate all these things and to uh, exuberate in terms of achieving our goals. Some of the tools of the TRIST we have, if you type, when you go to Google and type TRIST, I've been a TRIST gold medalist for quite some time. I adopted these methodologies and we implemented this with Samsung in, uh, in South Korea because uh, I live in Singapore. Uh, now I'm back here in India due to the pandemic. So just for the benefit of uh, everyone who over is listening. When we did this for Samsung, uh, the design thinking added with the TRIS, Samsung, not now, but almost about four or five years back, Samsung came out with multiple variants of their mobile phones. But when we talk about Apple, Apple was still stuck with the same model. And Samsung, of course, went ahead in different parts of the world. And today we have seen that Samsung has come out with the flip side of the phones and different sizes of the tablet. So we just leave it there. When we adopt this, when we adopt the Blue Ocean strategy, when we revisit and build a strategy, what happens is that we move from a stage of being consciously competent to unconsciously competent. Perhaps for the benefit of everyone, I can share this. If we had Usain Bolt, the 100 meters gold medal winner in three Olympics, what he would do is that if you put him in on any track, he does not look at the track, but he makes up the time. He says that 9.2 seconds and everything is done. Or rather, I mean, you know, he's got a great way of running. Consciously competent is that we are very aware of the fact that we are very much aware of the fact and we give a lot of prominence to our thoughts and say that, oh, okay, I have to get 99 marks. I have to get 99.7. What if it becomes an unconsciously you become competent? That's, that is the difference between stalwarts like Usain Bolt, some of them like Sachin Tendulkar and all these other people. Design thing, so everyone should understand that this is the tip of the iceberg as I'm repeatedly saying this, that this is, this is how, how we go about it. On slide number three, you'll also see that the next slide, Sandeep. Okay. This GIF does clearly help us to understand this is how the brain starts working when you incorporate or when you inculcate all these things that what we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, Sandeep, if you can go to the previous slide now, I have one or two things to cover there. Thank you. The previous slide, Sandeep. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we understand that they, on the webinar, we, they, these are bound to happen. All right. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So, consciously competent, unconsciously competent, consciously incompetent, unconsciously incompetent. These are the four stages in which the brain normally works when we have an idea that comes in. Sometimes around the world, people do come back and ask us these questions by saying, what if I don't have an idea? From where do I develop the idea? We always say that in order to develop the ideas, first and foremost thing that what we need to do is we have to find out in the strategic planning, where would you like to go? Now, when we say where would you like to go or where would you like to see yourself, it is not for the next one year. It is not for the next two years. It is for the next 20 years. It is for the next 25 years. When we start thinking on those lines, it is a usually we have seen that when we think for the next six months, our brain is the biggest liar in the entire human body. 
it says, okay, this is all fine for today. Let me think about tomorrow or probably when I have a cup of coffee or probably when I go abroad, I can get this kind of an idea. Strategy is very important. You have to bring in about 15 years, 20 years down the lane kind of a strategy. And I said, blue ocean strategy, when you go to Google, you can, you can clearly see the differences. And I have covered, I'm going to cover a little bit about the blue ocean strategy as well in the third and the fourth slide. I'll take you all through along with that. Why am I trying to repeat this particular slide two times is because this is what we do in the design thinking of the new wave. We condition ourselves. Conditioning is a part of the neuro linguistic program. It is extremely, extremely important. It is like how we use good quality hair conditioners and we say, all right, today my hair looks much better because we started using these conditioners. That's what I'm doing at the moment. Triss was started by a Russian scientist for all general problems, we do have a general solutions. For all technical problems, we do have a technical solutions. I can quote one example for the TRIS. During my visit to South Africa, a very well-known company, uh, a mining company by name Sanders, they did adopt design thinking using the tools of TRIS. Uh, for the benefit of all participants, I would like to stress upon one thing. If you do hear these business uh, concepts today as design thinking or as advanced design thinking or as data visualization, all that is fine. That is all on a plain canvas, but you do need the tools to paint that particular canvas. So therefore I'm saying, take a look at TRIS that will really help you out. We have TRIS, we have ARIS, that is the algorithm for the TRIS as well. And the last part of this particular second slide I said is on when we adapt all these four things, we become more unconsciously competent. That means we are changing our way of our thinking. In the next slide, I have shown you what happens, how it keeps on turning, how the idea starts beginning each, each day. Ideas begin, ideas multiply at every different part of the part of the day. Uh, sometimes we are stuck only with idea generation at about six in the morning. A few early morning raises, they are stuck at about four o'clock in the morning. But with this methodology, we have found out that people are generating ideas at every given point of the time. See, for me, to be very honest with you, all of you all, my day started about 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 or 4. Now the local time is about 5, 5.30 with about four hours of class. If I still have that kind of an energy and then the ideas are beginning, that is only because that I adopt TRIS and I adopt these blue ocean strategies uh, as a new way. Can we come to the next slide? Uh, the, Sandeep? Yes, sir. I've done and the next slide, please. Thank you. Yeah, right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what we did speak, never, never go behind your competitors. Is that correct? Yes, it is. You can take a look at what your competitors are doing, but that shouldn't be your goal. Two, move away from red ocean strategy to the blue ocean strategy. What happens with the red ocean strategy is that we all try and imitate. Now, today, when I ask this question, uh, across the world in different universities or with different companies, as a matter of fact, I ask, I ask them the same thing. I say that, okay, what would you like to start? They say, I would like to go to Google and find out what are the newer companies coming in and therefore on that basis I can build on. No, that's not the answer. If you're adapting here, you would be able to come out with a newer version. Now, some of the tools that what we did implement, I would like to share with the, all the participants at GIBS. We are very proud to say this. How do we, one of, one of the things that I can discuss, how do we test students? So we have a professor who will walk into the class, he will conduct the classes. And at the end of it, he will ask questions. And then the questions are answered by the students. Okay. And the evaluation is done by the professor. Okay. Now, now, the professor marked the answers based on his capability of or his understanding of the subject. And we term a student, you are brilliant because you got 94. You are very brilliant because you got 98. Because the student would have just learned it by heart or he or she would take the last four years of question papers. In order to improve on a particular subject like marketing management, what we did at GIBS was that we asked the students to prepare the question paper. Wow. And the students 
are answering their friend's question paper within the purview of the subject. By way of doing it, we found out that they have enlarged their vision on the subject by nearly 40 to 50 percent. And then and every time a student is thinking about a subject like marketing management, or it could be economics, or it could be organizational behavior, he or she has become a master in it. He is not following what exactly the professor has taught them in the classes, but they are exploring more possibility. And this is what, what we have done. That is why we said start competing within yourself or within your organization, adapting these tools then the thinking becomes designed. It is not that the thinking will, will not be designed. Otherwise, there are experts who come back and say, I have no clue how they've said this. They say that we all have about 700 thoughts a minute. I'm not sure on what basis that they would have said. But anyway, we do know that we, we get a lot of thoughts. We get ideas after visualizing something. But in order to move ahead, we will we are, we, we are struggling hard. So. These, this particular slide, what it says is never, never go behind your competitors, made us to come out with some of these unique tools. The other tools that what we did come out at GIBS for our management students was that without experience, they went to the market and they started marketing the products to understand where the negativism or the way how the market will react towards the products. By way of doing it, we reverse their thinking as well. So these are some of the very small things that I can talk about it. Uh, this morning, I'm really thankful to my very good friend and our uh, philosopher and guide, Mr. Ritesh Goel. He was mentioning to me certain things in terms of uh, how well the students are now adapting towards these kind of uh, thinking system. So the last one that I do have for all of you all, can we go to the next slide, Sandeep? Yes, sir. Next one, Sandeep. Yes. Next one, sir. Okay. Follow four actions of the blue. Ocean. This is your takeaway. And this is what I'm saying. Now, I have copied some of these things uh, so that I can send the links to you later on. Rule number one, as a blue ocean strategist, this is what, what I add up. Raise what can be improved in the existing industry. When you say that these are the faults that are lying within myself, I would like to compete within myself and I want to move ahead that the strategic part of the thinking shifts from red ocean to the blue ocean. Reduce what results with the competitor or with the other companies, can we remove them? Now, basically, here we touch upon the competitors to see, to some extent only to see, okay, in the ranking wise where exactly we are. Eliminate what features of the existing industry should be eliminated. Now, how about this? Why is it that the timetable is made so strict for all these children who go to the schools or to the kids or to MBA, BCom, MCom students? Monday morning, we see mathematics. I mean, I'm just saying in general, mathematics is the first subject. Why shouldn't it be with history or with some other leaner subjects and then increase the subjects which are tougher by Tuesday or by Wednesday so that everyone would have been used to coming to the school? This is what we do in design thinking. Very, very few smaller things. Uh, one more example I can quote to you all is, in Sweden, we have top Nobel Prize winners or the maximum Nobel Prize laureates. They all come from Sweden. But there is a general rule in Sweden that the homework given to the students has to be completed in the school, but that's one. The second part is the homework should not be for more than 30 minutes. Now, the results, we have seen some tremendous effects that have been coming in. So perhaps during the question times, I can answer all these things simply due to time constraints. I can't get too deeper or I can't get too, uh, you know, get boiled on this. Uh, one of the other things, uh, using the new wave in Japan, we have, they have come out in the school, they have come out with uh, a new concept saying that there should be no failures in the school system. Everyone has passed, so that is the notion that the students begin with. So when they start their journey with these notions, their experiential learning has compounded with their design thinking, and it has gone up by about 200 to 300%. This actually, or rather, rather than using the word actually, I would say that 
they dive very deep into the subject matter and they become experts. The last part of it here is create with new features. Can the company, an educational institute or an industry or a country create that other businesses has never offered? Yes, it goes without saying. You should take a look at the entire course. And at the end of the course, everyone would say that now I have arrived. I am not compounded. I'm not bounded by the regular rules. I am a master and I have been able to excel myself very well indeed. We tried this out with one of the engineering colleges and we found out that by the time the students were in this third year, they were much, much more competent than their eighth semester students or even people with about three to four months of experience or five months of experience. So ladies and gentlemen, I have shared something with you all directly from my experience of 25 to 30 years. I understand that this is a webinar. It is not a two-way communication. It is like one-way communication. I've tried to match as much as I can in this very brief introduction to the design thinking new wave, that is 2.0. The first video, unfortunately, we couldn't play, but that's all right. As I mentioned to you, uh, the video only speaks about the way how the tires have been changed in the F1 cars. They were able to reduce the time and they brought forward certain other things. Now, that again relates back to they never, never, never looked at their competitors. That means either the Williams or either the Mercedes, the Red Bulls. They never looked at, okay, this guy has got 1.96. Now let me reduce the tire chain. I'm, I'm talking about a second, by the way. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about it in minutes. So if someone can change all the four tires of an F1 car in 1.96 seconds, the second team in order to make sure that they can have a winner, they had to reduce it from 1.96 to 1.94. That's like two by hundredth of a second. It is the same people, it is the same people. Everything is the same, but how did they achieve? You have to see that particular video, we'll send you that link. They achieved it because they started competing against themselves. They also found out people who had slightly smaller hands we're taking about one by one hundredth of a second to change the tires or the calculations came in. Analysis comes in in a very beautiful way when you do follow all these things. So it's uh, we're sorry that we couldn't play that particular video due to the bandwidth connections around here. However, somebody would be very kind enough in terms of sharing it. And I have also shared with you a couple of tools as well. And the final part of it, I have given you these four mantras or the frameworks within the blue ocean strategy that you can start adopting it this will pave way to move ahead in the new lines of design thinking we have to start somewhere we have begun the journey today i'm sure that all of us here on this particular platform will look forward to moving ahead and generating more ideas that comes in and i did speak about it is not the money problem that the world has got it is certainly the idea problem. If we do have greater ideas coming in, money would almost, I mean, will always come in. There is no doubt about it. And there is nothing bigger than a contradiction because for us design thinkers, every contradiction is a great and a unique opportunity. One last example I would like to share with you all is <clears throat> Google is working out in terms of reaching some of the, they also adapt some of these wonderful tools, no doubt about it. They are reaching out to some of the tribal in Africa, where there is no electricity, they want to bring in internet connections. How? By way of using the satellites. Now, that is what I mean by contradiction. Now, in India, we always say that we have this problem, we have that problem, but every problem is a greater way of making more money. Because if we resolve it, we'll be able to do it. And the only way that we can resolve it is the new design thinking wave that is 2.0. By way of adapting all these tools and painting that canvas with beautiful pictures, so that what we want to achieve in the next five years, we can achieve in the next six months. With these few words, I am going to end this. And I'll take a few questions that comes in, handing over the mic to the moderator, because I've done 40 minutes of my talking. Sure, Thank you very much from whichever part of India you all have joined in, and it's been my pleasure. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll just over to you, sir. I'll uh, stop the screen sharing, sir, and we'll take up the questions, sir.
uh, sir, there are few questions which says, uh, first question has been asked uh, by uh, Mr. Nishant Mishra. He says, how can I think about new product for starting a business? If you could enlighten a bit on that, sir. Okay. Could you repeat that question once again? How can I think about a new product for starting a new business? He wants to start. What product do I have to start to start a business? First and foremost, I would I would like to uh, and, and the name, please again. What's it? What's his name? Sandeep. Nishant. Nishant, sir. Nishant Mishra. Sandeep, what? Nishant. Okay. Uh, hello, Nishant. Uh, my my answer to your question is that how do you want to start a product? I would have to say that it's like take a walk in the supermarket. So it is precisely you have to take a look at the newer products that have come into the world or the newer products that are coming in into the world. What is it like the hyperloops or it would be like getting in this satellite connections where there is no uh, internet or medicine travel, sending medicines. You need to first go through the TRIS. Now in TRIS, we talk about segmentation. That means you have to cut down your ideas and see which is the field or the area that fascinates you most? Which is the area that you like the most, not what others would like? I may like to teach. I may like to do or go into the research part of it or try to do a lot of training programs, but I cannot be compelled to do scientific studies or to run an educational institute. I can't do that. <laughs> so you have to first define the segment. Once you define the segment, then the ideas will start beginning by themselves. And then you can combine with the futuristic ideas that what can come in by way of starting it. You need a starting point. That is most important. That's the best answer that what I can think that I can give you at this moment. There are newer products coming in. Please browse on the net for a little while and minimize them, fun, you know, put them on a funnel. If you have 100 ideas around there, you just cut them. And once again, you segment them and you see maybe one or two of them that can that, that that wherein you know your heart beats for it and you love that particular idea and with that you can get complex. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure Nishant would have got an answer for that that he can surely look forward for. So moving ahead with the next question has been asked by Zamira Khan. The question has been asked by Zamira Khan. Will IT culture support the design thinking? I, IT culture. Will, will it support the design thinking? I would say that IT culture has to depend on the design thinking in order to move forward. Uh, this, 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 this was the result of the fintech companies that what we do have today. Uh, if we take a look at it, I would say India has advanced itself by looking at the fintech. We have some of the most beautiful apps that have come out exclusively for the stock markets to the other currencies that have come in. Yes, it has to support, and we have tools that are coming in embedded with the artificial intelligence. And now the machine learning is also coming in, trying to adapt some of these tools as well. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So the next question has been asked by Jay Kumar Surya Narayana. Innovative thinking on the problem, is it a design thinking? It is. It is. Innovative thinking on uh, innovative thinking is innovative problematic thinking or innovative thinking itself is a part of the design thinking. So as I said, what, what is a design? If I can just mention this to everyone, a design is nothing but it is like a, an empty canvas and we are painting. Why do we appreciate only a few paintings and not the others? Because that makes us a long lasting impression or we do know that this is, this is what people will like. Now that's a very big question. If I am painting and I know that my painting will be liked by everyone, that means I'm able to bring in my design thinking on the basis of what the people have taught me or what on the basis of what people are looking at me in terms of how the painting should be. So that must be, you know, I should be able to answer that question. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, yes. The next question has been asked by Manju Prasad. What type of issues can we deal with design thinking? Oh, everything. <laughs> it's, it's I would, this question was asked by someone. I would say, I, I, I would say that anything to do with the businesses, anything to do with the industry, anything to do with the country, and anything to do with all these things can be resolved. However, there is a word of caution that I must say. Last time someone came back and said, 
can can I use design thinking for my family issues? I said, no, you can't do that because that, that's too different. This is only as far as you know, our ideas are concerned, our businesses are concerned, because everything falls under a framework, everything falls within an within the norms of the society, then we will be able to adapt this. Yeah. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm sure he'll uh, try implementing in his business ideas, not in the family. So moving ahead, sir, uh, Mr. Yes. Suma Mukherjee is asking, what is the red ocean? If we don't check on the competition, how can, uh, how can one do the market research or improve? This concept of design thinking looks different. What I learned in Infosys. Okay, just to answer that question. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you can you repeat that once again? There, there, there's repeat. a bit of an audio problem here. Can yeah, you... I'll repeat it, sir. What is the yes, red ocean? Yes. If we don't check the competition, okay, how one can do market research or improve? This concept of design thinking okay. looks different. What I learned in Infosys. I hope Mr. Soma is, has worked in Infosys. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's wonderful. Now, the Red Ocean strategy is that we only look at the competitors time and again. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at the competitors. The percentage of time being spent on looking at the competitors should be only about a percent or two percent in detail. When we start improving, when we start adapting all these uh, sorry, these strategies, what happens is that then we will realize that whatever our competitors have adapted, what is a strategy? Strategy is a vision where they want to go in the next five years. We would be able to achieve those five years of result in the next five months or six months. But if we are fretting around the fact and if we are all the time looking at our competitors where exactly they are going for our own market research basis, it is like running with chains on our ankle, we will not be able to run much more faster. First rule is that in a red ocean strategy, it is like a crowded market. It is like a crowded aquarium. It does not give any, any, I would say, any basis for a new formative way of thinking. We look at the competitors. When we look at the competitors, we only change by about a fraction or a little bit, or, or maybe about one or two percent indeed. Now you take the educational industry, there came the Baiju's, all right, fine. The apps came out, then everyone else came out. Why don't we have something which is completely different than all these apps that are working? That is what Blue Ocean does. If you constantly look at the Red Ocean, we only try to improve on an app by one or two features, which the common man does not appreciate it. So Red Ocean is in a crowded market. Blue Ocean is in an individual, is, is an individual market for us to move ahead. So I'm sure that uh, I have given you a little bit of insight about it. If you have more questions to Sandeep, you can always post these questions by email. We would be more than happy at GIBS to answer all this, please. Certainly, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the next question has been asked by Shravya. How competition affect evolution? How competition? Affect evolution. How competition affect evolution? <laughs> okay, so what, what perhaps what you would be meaning is that uh, how competition is avoiding the evolution. Okay, I would I would I would rather say that if you what happens to all of us when we take a look at the web browsers every morning, we have similar results coming in in about one thousand, hundred thousand, a million results. And there is absolutely no room for any newer improvement that can come in into our thinking indeed. Competition is good. I would like to look at the competition from different levels. It is like a pilot who's flying his plane at an altitude of 30,000, 35,000 or at 40,000 feet. He gets a better view of the world. If the same pilot is flying his Cessna aircraft at 800, 000, sorry, about 10,000 or at 7,000 feet, he may not be able to get a bigger view of it. I would like to look at the computation, but I would like to look at the computation from a distance and measure them for my my uh, evolution of thoughts or rather trying to generate new thoughts. Great, great. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, moving ahead with the next question is, it's been asked by Abhi Biju. Sir, could you please explain me what is reduce in blue, own strat blue ocean strategy? 
what sorry what was it uh, sir could you please explain me what is reduce in the way you have told the four points no sir raise reduce eliminate and create in that what do you mean by reduce in blue ocean strategy okay what we mean by way of reducing is that we are trying to say here we are reducing the way how or rather we are we are trying to mitigate our own mistakes to a la, to to a large extent when i say mitigate our own mistakes so what is a mistake a mistake is a goal that has not been met a mistake is not a mistake as been frequently told by everyone else people who look at each other and say oh it's a mistake that he went to that particular university it's a mistake that this happened but we take a look at that mistake and always we say that let's put in a measurement towards it and we try to reduce these mistakes in the organization by way of doing it we remove the defects in the organization by way of removing the defects we identify that even a much talented person if he is not utilized in an organization that itself is a defect so that is what what we are trying to say here so reduction in terms of our own defects that what we find in the organization or it could be in the educational system or it could be with the tuition center or it could be with uber or with google or over it is it is a balancing act of all the departments whichever department it's like the rule 20d right all of us have come to know about it 80% of the people do 20% of the job and 20% of the people will do 80% of the job so what if everyone were doing exactly 100% of the job then the the ship in which all of us are traveling we would be able to reach our vision and mission very clearly indeed if one or two people are not working correctly that is when we reduce so that is the part of the blue ocean strategy great sir thank you sir i hope uh, biju you have received you have got your answer so moving ahead the next i will sir take up another about few of the questions are there so uh, professor can you please explain uh, tibz tips with one more example to enhance clarity this has been asked by dr shiv prakash shiv prasad nayak uh they see in, in what in an example for which one tips tips trees sir it is tips not tips it is what? trees oh trees yes 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 trees, yes trees, trees is a part of the system that has trees trees is a tool okay it's it's a management tool it's a tool which was founded by uh henry alstuser he is i'm sorry i'm not able to pronounce those russian names clearly although i speak a bit of french here and there um trends has helped many organizations to move forward now one of the things that what we do in trends that i can give you as an uh, as an example is that we did this for maruti maruti motors uh, one of in, in the trends tool we have a concept which is called as beforehand cushioning so when you go on to google and type on trends you'll come to know there are 40 uh, trends two principles and we also do have the matrix that comes in in so a beforehand cushioning how did it help maruti cars well a uh, simple concept people who are about 35 to 40 years of age if they are driving their cars uh, it is bound that after 6 months or after 8 months you do know that you start getting a bit of a back pain because the car cushioning should have gone ahead so a beforehand cushioning concept in tris did say that why don't the dealer send a soft cushion or he could send a backrest to that particular owner after 3 months or 4 months before the cushion itself will get worn out so these are some of the concepts that what we do teach now in terms of samsung what we did was we came we asked samsung in korea especially in seoul to come out with multiple variants we said why do you want to get stuck with only one size Uh, why can't we have more sizes so you know when we are getting in into the war room when we are playing around you know, with innovative concepts all these things is coming in the design part of it that's what made samsung to think 3 years back can we have a flip phone now people good companies are coming out and saying can i bounce a phone i mean if i if i accidentally drop a phone can i have a technology that can just bounce back it shouldn't break any part of the phone so they are working out towards it this is what they they take a look at the tris tools and it helps them out a lot great sir thank you so much for that sir so the next question is been asked by sinchan deep how to convince investors to invest in my product <laughs> okay. uh, 
come out come out with <laughs> with the most brilliant idea the idea which has not been seen by the others your investors will definitely buy in we say about this never talk about the money talk about the value value is like it's it's, it's impossible to explain what exactly is a value if i if we can sit down here for the next 2 hours and we are talking about it without any anything been exchanged we would say that yes it was a valuable session for us so if they find more value in your system investors would automatically come in indeed there are a lot of investors who are ready trying to look at a, a system or an organization which defines more value uh, but they are not looking at organizations that do not have now one classic example i can give you is that we were doing a lot of the data mining today and we came to know most of these um, uh, you know the supply chain management companies or the delivery that have been done on a couple of platforms like zomato swiggy and all these things today the customer is coming back and saying i want to see a smiling person i want to see a person who comes in uh, delivering the food even more cleaner and neater is that possible now that's the value that what he's asking for to the money that he pays so my suggestion to you is bring out the value and you see the investors coming in in a b line to your organization bring in the value absolutely sir so uh, so there's this is uh, i'm not very sure this is the relevant question for us but it says uh, abhi ranjan is asking sir as a ceo what do you expect from your employees oh it's it's a relevant question i as a ceo i'll ask the employees only one question i wouldn't say why are we succeeding i would just say that why are we failing why is it that we are not able to reach the mark that where we want to go that is the part of the continuous improvement that i would like to ask my every employee in my organization i could have a doorman i could have a janitor i could have a ceo i could have a finance guy an it person everyone else i mean you you know we had one more gentleman who had come down from from infosys so probably during the project management they would be trying this go with the agile methodology go with a stand up meeting and you see how the organization is working and then you will come to know you need to hear from each and every one you, you shouldn't be hearing it from different department heads if we are hearing it from the department heads i don't want to sound political that's how the states are run by the politicians if the politicians do come to the streets and travel with everyone then they will be able to understand so i hope this is answered your question please absolutely sir thank you for that sir uh, so we'll just take up last two more questions sir and uh, next question is been asked by ashitosh shrivastava as i am in my final year civil engineering how can design thinking will help me Oh, Ashutosh! All that I can say is, you are in civil engineering. Why aren't you not thinking about coming out with uh, tree top trees, <clears throat> tree top houses, tree top houses? Look at the civil engineering. I mean, I'm just giving you an idea out of this. People would love to come into the resort to actually hang in there where the, where the houses are built on top of a tree. So probably, if you go and take a look at it in California and other places, now that's a new wave that is coming in. they would say that i'm one with the nature of course i need internet so you can have all those things coming in there and uh, they are even using the 40 foot containers and then building in their houses as well so that's not the common way if i'm thinking in the common way that becomes more of a red ocean strategy but as a blue ocean strategy just this is how how i think about it so civil engineering you can think about it you can also take a look at the way how the china engineering is coming out with new and models of the houses that what they do have the peruvian houses the latin american houses coming out with something fabulous from there the ideas will start multiplying absolutely thank you yeah thank you so much sir the last question we'll take it okay abhi says thank you sir uh, so the next question the last question is is tris better than swot analysis to solve a problem 100% 100 i would say 1000% SWOT. What does it SWOT do? SWOT only talks about strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. But whereas stress is a vast ocean, if you use stress, you will be able to find the needle in an in, in an ocean. But SWOT is just mostly internal and external. We are dependent on what others do talk about it. But we are not trying to look at the contradictions. I would rather say that when you take a look at the contradictions, it's a wonderful opportunity to make more money indeed. Wherever there is a contradiction, wherever there is no improvement, that's why where the world is moving. In the past, in for 20 years back, everyone were moving towards countries like America, towards Great Britain, where we were rushing and saying, "Oh, these countries have got better features." 
But now an intelligent investor or or an idea generator, I'm sorry, or a design thinker is moving towards countries where there's nothing available because that gives him more opportunities to move. So I would say risks, it takes almost about a year and a half to understand it. It's worth it. Please invest your valuable time on it. And with this note, ladies and gentlemen, along with Sandeep, I would say thank you very much and goodbye. I have another class to continue at 6.30, which is another online takes another 20 minutes. It was a great pleasure having all of you all uh, for this uh, very simple seminar on, on design thinking. God bless everyone and thank you very much, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It was really an honor and pleasure to have you and uh, for your real valuable session, sir. Thank you so much. So I would like to uh, thank the participants for joining and being an extensive support system for us. So thank you so much to all the participants. And for all the students, uh, for all the participants, kindly note your certificates will be shared within a couple of days on your email ID. And do not miss your upcoming uh, webinars, which is on 18th of January uh, by Mr. Girish Kosugi, who is an MD and CEO at Canfin Home uh, Private Limited. So do follow us on the social media. So you will be seeing all the uh, webinars which is available on the YouTube. You can have a look around that as well. We have the copies save, saved in the YouTube as well. So good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you Anup sir for sparing your time. It was really having wonderful to have you on uh, the webinar sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed once again and have a wonderful evening. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye, sir. Thank you.